can't see you. <laughs> miracles. What does miracle mean? Miracles is an event which can't be explained by any natural or scientific rules. Did miracles happen? Do they happen now? I've grown up studying stories of miracles. Hanuman picked up the mountain to save Lakshman's life. He couldn't find the medicinal plant. Moses separated the seas to save his people from Pharaoh's army. Do miracles happen today? Let me narrate stories in my life, which I call them miracles. Let me start with the story of my mom. My mom came from a very impoverished family. Her father was in the manufacturing of firecrackers. Firecrackers is a seasonal business. So many a times, they would not have the money. And many a times, my mom would say that she would go to sleep with only a glass of water because there was no food at home. There was a day when a guest turned up unannounced and there was no food at home. There was no ration at home. She rushed inside, lay down a prayer mat, and started praying. Out of nowhere, a customer came to buy a box of firecrackers. From the money which got from selling that firecracker, somebody rushed from the back gate to buy the ration. And when the ration came home, they cooked food for the guest. Chance, luck for my mom, a miracle. Let me tell you about my life stories. Me standing in front of you here today alive is a miracle. I was born with jaundice. I survived. My brother who was born after seven years when science and medicine had advanced, he couldn't survive more than two months. Chance. Luck, for me, a miracle. When I was in school, my father was honored by the Maharashtra government and designated him as the Justice of Peace. This was an authority that he could attest all documents. This was a great honor of that time. And he was invited to our hometown, Baroda, to be felicitated by the community. I was living in my grandfather's house, which was a mud hutment. It was in a locality where scheduled caste community lived. And when I was in the house, with my uncle and aunts, riots broke out. A large group of people rushed to our house and poured kerosene all around. As they were going to torch the house, our neighbors rushed in and said, stop. They are good people. Those few words from our neighbors saved our lives. Jesus said, love thy neighbors as thyselves. They can also save your lives. Chance, luck, for me a miracle. My family would go to Khandala during the weekends when I was in college. I would not miss any classes because I was a 100% attendance student. So I would jo join them by taking the train to Khandala. I would get down at Khandala station, and the fastest way to reach the house was walk along the tracks. I assume that the train goes on the tracks, so if I am a few feet away, I will be safe. There are certain portions in that route where the mountain is just cut so that the train can just pass. And there is a nala which takes away the, takes the water, the rainwater away. I was in that portion when a train came towards me, 
blaring the horn. There was somebody on the opposite side shouting at me, jump into the nala, jump into the nala. I refused to listen. I said, I'm safe. Then he started using foul language. That foul language made me jump into the nala. As the train came, I stood in the nala with cold water flowing in my feet, flat on the mountain, with my body flat on the mountain, because the train had just missed me. After the train passed, which is just a few seconds or a few minutes, I looked for that person who used his foul language so that I could save my life. He was nowhere to be seen. Chance? Luck, for me, a miracle. So, miracles have not saved my life once, not twice, but three times, that I know of. I lead a very cautious and a careful life. Not because I want to live long, I know my life is a gift, I believe, to serve. I get up in the morning, one hour before sunrise, and start the day with my prayer. However busy I am during the day, I grab 20 minutes to again take a break and say my prayer. I sleep after a few hours after sunset, sometimes with only a glass of water. Now let me take me back to Khandala. I was running my own business, and I used to take my managers for a retreat. After the discussions we would have, they would go on a hike. So one of the hikes, one of my managers, with, along with all the others, Ravi, he went on a hike just close to the Khandala Falls. Khandala Falls is the falls which you, as you enter, the falls are there. At a particular situation, he got stuck. He couldn't go up, he couldn't go down. And it was getting dark. The only way he could come out of this is to jump into the stream which was flowing at fast speed that time and cross, go to the other side. He didn't know how to swim. The water flow was very strong and the fall was only a few meters away. Suddenly, a guy appeared on the opposite side and jumped into the water and said, come on, jump, I will catch you, jump. He jumped. And this man caught him and took him to the shore. In Ravi's words, I wanted to thank him. I wanted to get his contact address. But he just disappeared into thin air. The only thing I came to know when I was in the water that his name was Muhammad. Chance, luck, for me a miracle. It was 1997 when my nephew was born. He was born with a triple heart defect. It's known as a blue baby. And the only way he could survive was a surgery. That time, the surgery can take place only after the child is one year old. When he became one year, the family decided that the best place to do the surgery was UK. So we will take him to UK for the surgery. It was late after, it was early afternoon when we received the call from London that the baby has been taken for the surgery. I laid out my prayer mat and started praying. It's a tradition that after we finish our prayer, we wrap the mat and keep it. I did not wrap the mat, but I went on a journey. My first stop, we were living in Mahim that time, my first stop was Siddhi Vinayak Temple. And that was not the first time I went there. So I knew what to do. I prayed there. 
And my next stop was Worli. Worli, that is Saint Anthony, pray for me. I prayed there. My next stop was Haji Ali, a long walk into the sea, and I reached the mausoleum, and I prayed for the success of the surgery. From Haji Ali, I returned back to Mahim, the Mahim Darga, close to my house. Again, I prayed there, and my next stop was St. Michael's Church in Mahim. I kneel down in St. Michael's Church and say my prayer again that for, for the success of the surgery. From St. Michael's Church, my next stop was Bandra, that is Mount Mary Church. In Mount Mary Church, I saw baby Jesus in the arms of Mother Mary. I couldn't control myself. I started crying. I started crying and praying. Please give back the baby to the mother. Please give back the baby to the mother. Suddenly something happened. I stopped crying. An unusual calm came, on, came over me. I looked at the time and I got up to go. By the time I reached home, the call had come from London that the surgery is successful. I said my thank you prayer and that was the end of the day. A few days later, one of the relatives who had gone with the baby came back and he was giving the details of the which, what time the baby was taken in the surgery, what time the surgeon came out and said operation was successful. When he gave the time, when the surgeon came out and said the operation was successful, I was stunned. Thousands of miles away, in India, in Bombay, in Bandra, in Mount Mary Church, I heard a voice and these were the words, the baby is back with the mother. This is no chance, this is no luck, this is a miracle. The baby today is an engineer, Ravi is head of sales of SAP partner and I am here with you. I invite you to look at such occasions in your life. They may not be chance. They may not be just luck. Miracles. Thank you. <laughs>